And I believe one of the key things, we can't do our own trade agreements directly with China or India or US now. We have to go through Peter Madison uh, and the EU. So then that's a huge benefit. And also Africa. You know, Africa has been crucified by a lot of EU tariffs and, and barriers. And we could, we could actually open up Africa for free trade and help uh, you know, develop a lot of these countries. The £60 billion pounds gross contribution we could spend on our own people, on our own roads, and we could build better airports and, um, and a high-speed rail line to stop us about that. <laughs> but you know, this is cash, £6 billion pounds a year net, which we could spend on infrastructure in this country. We could re-establish the primacy of Westminster and our own laws and courts. We could grant fishing licenses. We give away £2.5 billion pounds of fish every year. 70% of, of fishing grounds used to be owned uh, by us, now it's about 8%. Uh, CAP, we could reform as well on farming. We could take back control of immigration, that's a big issue now. Uh, we don't have any control over EU migration. Work permits are a good way forward, restoring controls. And finally, we could uh, strip back government, uh, bureaucracy, and we could reduce the number of politicians, that's a good thing, isn't it? Uh, and actually get rid of the whole layer of politicians, namely the MEPs. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, um, we believe there is an alternative and a positive vision to the EU. We believe it is about a prosperous, free trading, freestanding, independent Britain. Trading happily with the EU, being friendly to the EU, we don't hate Europe. But looking anew to a globalised world and to the Commonwealth. And that's what we mean by true UK independence. And with the Constitution now being forced upon us, without, we believe, a democratic mandate, this is a very serious point. So what I would say, please support uh, the motion today about all the way out, all the way out. <coughs> When you say what are the perils of it, I would say because it's profoundly undemocratic 
and I'm accountable. We, we mentioned, Michael mentioned, you know, about the Balkans, you know, bringing them into the EU. I would say what we're trying to create is another Yugoslavia. And why did Yugoslavia blow apart? Uh, it was another European construct, lots of different nations forced together. It needed a dictator at the heart of it. Um, and when that dictator died, Tito died, it blew apart. I don't want to see tensions in Europe. I don't want to see tensions in Europe. I, I'm perfectly happy you know, to have friendly relations. I'm not advocating any sort of you know, nastiness towards Europe at all. But it is about avoiding being in this political super state. And that, that is the core of it. I, I struggle too with this whole notion of being uh, wary of Europe and thinking, uh, I, mean, I think of myself as a European. I mean, technically we've been citizens of Europe, actually, I think since Maastricht. Um, and that doesn't mean to say that that has somehow become more important than being citizens of the United Kingdom. We carry British passports. That defines our nationality, our, our citizenship very, very clearly. But what it means is that as we go abroad, yes, um, yes the common format now, Yes, the old, the old horrible blue ones that some of the older people like me in the audience will remember. Old parties, yeah. were, 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 were still, uh, you know, it was momentarily sad in those ways, but I really don't think anybody seriously thinks that that is you know, that's continuing an issue of sovereignty. But if we travel within the European Union, our citizens of Europe means that if we fall ill, we can use the health services in other countries and get access to them in a way that as non-European citizens, we would not. I think this is a benefit of being part of Europe, not a problem. And I just, I, 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 I fear for this whole line of Ireland. Can I just take the advantage of my first contributions in speaking to take on a point that David said about how we were somehow going to lose our foreign policy and our British embassies were going to melt away. I want to see a single proposal in any document, far less this new reform treaty, that suggests such a thing. I want to see any evidence of it. There is none. It is a complete nonsense. British? Thank you, Prosecutor. Well, I, okay, sorry, I didn't bring my copy of the treaty with me, but I'm very happy to take the okay. reference on go away. I'm um, sorry. It, it, it is, it's just, it's not right. It's not right. Well, and, and this is the problem. We, we begin to perpetrate complete myths about what's going on, and that, I don't think, helps either side of the side. Well, you say you agree with my mommy. Why have effectively a foreign minister? It's been renamed because it's all part no. of the cynical deceit that is what's going on at the moment. I'm sorry, you know, he is effectively a foreign minister. He will represent uh, Europe. He will eventually they'll take the place, the British place, at the Security Council. No, 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 sorry. Myths number two and three have just been <laughs> Common 